By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm opening a nice little envelope with really cool cards inside. And I'm actually going to use the cards as a topic starter because I would like to talk a little bit about EDH and where EDH comes from. So most of you probably know that EDH stands for Elder Dragon Highlander. Um, but do you also know, ooh, here we go. We got cards in a top loader, that's a good sign. Uh, but do you also know that um, EDH actually comes from the Elder Dragons of Legends, right? But there is a step before that even, and that's what I wanna talk about a little bit. And that step is called Highlander. And in 1993, Magic was released, right? With the set of Alpha. And what happened in those days, as we opening this, by the way, what happened in those days is um, the scene got competitive fairly quickly. And, and so people started to go and look for the best possible decks uh, to play. And what happened was like the earliest form of net decking. You would go to a tournament and I didn't play in those days. So this is purely based on what I've read about it, but, uh, and what I've seen about it. There, there's some old footage actually that you can check out on YouTube. It's quite entertaining. Um, but what, what used to happen in those old days is uh, you would go to tournament and half of the decks was the same. Like everybody was playing the similar decks because they knew these are the best decks in the format. And, you know, we want to win a tournament. We're competitive. We want to win the game. Um, so this was a problem. And then there were a few players who started to, you know, design other ways of playing Magic. And one of those ways was by playing Highlander. And Highlander is named after... Um, the Highlander movie that was released in 1986, I believe. Um, and that idea of that movie is there's this, there are Highlanders in the world and, you know, there can only be one, only one can remain. So they have to fight together and only one can survive. And that's where the idea of Highlander originally came from. So a hundred card deck only with single cards in the deck. And you would actually start with a hundred life points and it was one V one. Can you imagine how long that takes? And then Legends got released. And what happened then? So I'm going to flip it. And here we see one of the Elder Dragons. So the Elder Dragons got released. And here we see another Elder Dragon. And let me just take it out of the sleeve. They look really, really nice. Here you see them. Palladia Moors and Arcadius Sabbath. And of course, we've got... Some more Elder Dragons. Of course, we've got Nicol Bolas. That's another one that I actually own. Um, and what happened when the Elder Dragons were released, a new form of magic created around the Highlander theme. Because one of the players of Highlander, Adam St uh, Staley, he decided to create his Highlander deck around actually Nicol Bolas. So that was the first commander, you could say. And his whole deck was built around the colors of Nicol Bolas and the card Nicol Bolas. And later... That developed into the commander way of playing magic that, you know, so many people do these days. And EDH even has grown out to be the most popular and most famous format. And yeah, of course, you know, being an old school player, I love to own these dragons. And they are also represented in Chronicles. That is actually a whole different story because people went kind of crazy when Chronicles did that, when Chronicles came out. Because you have to imagine these cards were very valuable at the time and then chronicles came and they completely crashed in value um, and i think that's even when the whole reserve list started but i think that's something for another mail day or another episode um for now yeah look at these cards i mean i'm really really happy with them so palladia moors uh two red two green two white and two for an elder dragon seven seven flying the good thing about this one is it has trample it's the only elder dragon with trample and of course, one of the downsides of these dragons, I mean, they just seem com completely underpowered, you know, by today's standards. But in old school, it's still cool to play. It's still, especially old school commander, these these, these guys are cool to play. Uh, old school Highlander, whatever you wanna, whatever format, uh, it's cool to play. But I always find the upkeep cost is kind of harsh because if you kind of want to ramp into it and you want to play it early using a Black Lotus or maybe, um, using some Birds of Paradise, I don't know, play it out early. It's very vulnerable, right? Because as soon as your land base is attacked, 
and you cannot pay this cost anymore, the dragon's gone. Let's take a moment to enjoy the art. I've always, <laughs> always found this little, yeah, this little family here fascinating. You really got to enjoy that art. Edward Beard Jr. He still he still does a lot, by the way. You can get um, altars from him and, and artist proofs. And he's pretty active on Facebook. Um, and then we have Arcades Sabbath. And according to the lore, I believe Arcades Sabbath was the dragon that would work together with other humans. And he actually created kind of like cities or a city where they all like lived pretty peacefully. And he was, of course, the leader that they all worshipped. So two blue, two green, and two white. So that's a pretty strong color combination. And two, all the Elder Dragons have a casting cost of eight in total. Um, this one flies, and as you can see, it doesn't have trample. It does have some other bonus, though, for one white plus O plus one until end of turn, so you can pump it. And maybe more interesting here, your untapped creatures gain plus O plus two. And that, of course, makes it quite interesting to play this card. And attacking creatures do not get this bonus. Right, and then you have that upkeep cost again that Palladium Morris has and that all the other Elder Dragons have. Okay, this was uh, my little mill day for today. Not a lot of cards to show, but I really do love the cards that I got. So if you wanna support the channel, you can do so by leaving a like. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet or leave a comment. All of that is appreciated. You can also become a patron and then you can join uh, Timmy Talks and you can join Timmy Talks events and whatnot. And your name will be listed in the end scroll. How cool is that? If you want to know um, how you can do that, how that all works, click on the info card that you see right now. And uh, that will take you to the Patreon page where you can get all the information about Timmy's Patreon program. For now, thank you for watching and let's take a look at the amazing, the fantastic and scroll of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikkertjes somber gezien.